Got the stage. I'd like just to raise awareness to mental health. Um, I've suffered from depression in the past and still do today. Uh, it sucks, and I know that there's lots of mental health issues going on. With conferences like we're at, it's great to see people again, but equally there's lots of fear of missing out as I need to be somewhere. So um, just make sure you take a break. And um, yeah, there's always someone who wants to, if, if you ever feel rough or tough, then there's always someone who's going to listen and reach out to you. But there's something else. Um, I just wanted to do a quick bash warm-up, because who doesn't want to do a bash warm-up? Um, whenever I run this command, um, something happens which I don't expect it to. So if false, so to me, false is a negative. And so I'm expecting no to come out. But when I run this statement, uh, it keeps returning yes. And the reason is, is because I didn't appreciate the boundaries that were in place around that statement. Um, this year, I've had a number of friends who've uh, had people come up to them, and even though they've said no, uh, it seems like the other person heard yes. I'm only raising this because I've seen it really affect people, and it sucks, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what this will do for it, but yeah. All right, so who are we? I'm Natalia. I'm a security product owner at Island. I really like surfing and running and like flying and generally being outside. But I also like reading good books and listening to good music. And here is Luis. Hi, I'm Luis. I'm a security architect at ChainGuard. Um, I'm very impressionable, as you can see with my list of emojis. Um, and that's pretty much me. And um, we are here to give you like kind of a couple of tools and kind of like an architecture um, to run CTF exercises inside your company or just like with your friends and basically to have fun. And then I work for Isovalent and Luis is working for ChainGuard, but this talk is not specific about companies or like running specific tools. It's uh, basically giving you like kind of like a CTF framework and an architecture. But if you are at KubeCon, we are here as well, so please come to say hi uh, to our booth. And then if you are here virtually, please come to say hello. Cool. Has anyone seen this comic strip before from XK, uh, XKCD? So for me, this is a problem that we have at the moment with ourselves in that we learn something new, but we're too, we're too afraid to be able to share that onto someone else because we're afraid that if we open up to say, oh, have you seen this new thing? And someone says back to you, God, yeah, I knew about that already. How come you didn't know about that? It's something that I feel that we need to overcome. We need to be more open. And this it demonstrates it exactly how I think of it. I, I had the role of a trainer for a while and just helping people get started. The first time they pop their first shelf out of a container, it's that magical moment where it's like, oh God, actually I can do this again and again. And being able to share with that with people is just is epic. So what is a CTF? So it's somewhere between a company offsite and an escape room and the movie Saw 4. <laughs> so um, if you go into the escape room and someone's like, well, I'll get out of here by throwing a chair at the window. Yeah, yeah you, congratulations, you've done it. Um, but we probably need to uh, respect our boundaries. And equally, we need to put CTFs in place that are achievable, because if the CTF has a keyboard that's about a foot away from my hand and I'm chained back and there's a hacksaw next to my hand, that's too intense. We need to make it a pleasant experience for everyone to attend. So what is a flag? It's actually like an objective inside a CTF. So sometimes it can be compared to like saving points in like what's called computer games when you achieve something. So it can be like a main task, or it can be actually like a side quest. And then basically it contains information, what you, what you should do next, or like where you should uh, look after in the upcoming tasks. And there is also a concept of like red team and then blue teams. Red team basically the adversaries. These are people that they are trying something that they, they are not supposed to do. And then basically the blue teams are the defenders. So they are trying to prevent something uh, that the red team is not supposed to be doing. And then for whom is a CTF for? So we are here in all different ages and then sizes. Like uh, the point is it's not really matter like who you are. And then CTF is for everyone with all these kind of like different perspectives and like different kind of experiences. So for example, a Kubernetes operator who is a Kubernetes operator for like 20 years we view things differently, who is like uh, in this like area for like the last four or five, five years. So we have all different kind of experience and that's fine. This is what a CTF can drive us for. 
So to that, I feel very much like the Sonic on the left here, um, in that everyone sees my imperfections, that everyone knows like the bits of information that I don't know, because I constantly beat myself up just thinking that I'm not good enough for what for, to be in any role. Um, but actually, it's the other Sonic on the right. Um, people see this other, I hope sometimes people see this anyway, but it's this basis of if I can share information with people, then it helps them get on to that next step. And if we keep thinking of ourselves as just being not ready for this, then we're never going to share. And this GIF is a little bit too busy for me, but I realized that we had a number of, um, we had a number of images of uh, older games for a new game in, but it's about building up infrastructure now for us. Um, we want to be as close to reality as possible. So when we spin things up, we probably want to do it in the cloud. Um, now, in saying that, make sure you've got your scripts in place so that you can spin things up quickly. Um, but as well as being able to spin things up quickly, if you're doing a CTF, you're probably going to have some vulnerabilities in place, like we're going to be doing in our CTF today. Having it up and open to the public is also a problem, because if someone else finds your cluster and pwns it, make sure you've got their teardown script to give you that confidence. Um, and it's never going to be perfect. Like what we're about to show you today, I'm really setting this up really well. It's not perfect yet, <laughs> but it, it, we'll, we'll strive to get it there. But it's the most important thing is, is that we share it. And, um, and finally, um, when you are running an event, make sure that you've got the respect in place. Like I said, make sure that everyone feels included. Um, I gave a talk earlier this year about threat modeling, and one of the key things for me is just to make sure that everyone has uh, a voice. Everyone feels confident to be able to say, this doesn't look right. If on your first day you see something and you're like, this doesn't feel right, being able to raise it up to another team for them to review and say, oh, actually, that's a great save because that could have really been a bad day for us. So at this point, I think it's time to get our game on. Um, yeah, let's do it. So I've still got internet access, I hope. So we've created this repo, and this is what we're going to send to the attendees. We've based this, um, this scenario, um, we've, well, let's, let's go through this. We've based this on a taxi company called Fubar. Um, so, Fubar, someone who works at Fubar was paid $10,000 um, to be able to get, send across their password. So they, and this could be done by um, OSINT, by just seeing that someone um, on the, look on LinkedIn to see that there's an engineer within this company, look at their Twitter profile, and then you see that they like going to track days, and then you offer them $10,000 if they come first on the track day, and they're the only ones going to the track day. That's one way we could get around this. So from that, we can see that we've got the username and password, and we also found their public website uh, where we can use that. There's an email chain there. And we've also done our OSINT on this company. And so FUBA um, are proud to announce that every taxi they have is for Homer. So for Homer is a trademark taxi for FUBA. Um, and in, the, in, in their press releases, they've also noticed that um, they've got ride-based automotive control, or as they call it, RBAC. And with this RBAC that you have in place, you're able to upgrade your rides um, and pivot into your next ride. There's also something they call Beep Beep. So Fuba wanted to give back to the community. So they've written an application to manage all the traffic lights within Detroit. Um, we also find out that they're proud that it runs in memory. And in the event of a crash, um, it, writes out all their log, um, it writes out all the log. Finally, we've got Boombox. So Boombox is a feature that um, Everyone likes singing in their cars, but when you're in someone else's car, not so much. So we're trying to encourage it by being able to give you lyrics to the songs that you're listening to. Um, yeah, so that's just some of the OS in that we have going into this. So with our credentials here, we're going to go into the GitLab instance. That's a little bit too soon, no, it wasn't yeah. it? Is. So I, I'm going in here, and I can see that it was, uh, we got the FUBA taxi. So looking through this readme, I can see there's a couple of files here. Um, make sure to give them a five-star rating afterwards. Um, we've got, oh, there's one of our flags. <laughs> and in the readme, it says, clone this repo, get up to speed, reading the history of our commits. So uh, what's happening there? Yeah. And also the storage um, of an S3 bucket, um, and we're using that to manage our uh, config to our cluster. There's a key and a secret to keep the credentials safe, but it gives us an endpoint and a client to use. Now, if you're hosting an event or if you're writing your own, these are the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that you're giving to people to put together to make that, to make that beautiful picture of whatever it is. Um, but you need to start giving some people some hints and to make it a bit more enjoyable. So let's go and have a look in our commit history. Are we doing our time? Um, so looking through here, you can see that we had issues about two hours ago, but we all forget about that. Um, what is MRC? 
MVLC. So MVLC, it's a file that you can put into a directory, and um, if you use a client tool with it, it will, if you've got export variables in there, then it'll put it into that shell um, when you go into that uh, directory. But the two interesting ones that we can see is that we got feet and we got fix. So if a feature of ignoring an MVLC file is quite quickly followed by remove MVLC file, that suggests to me something might have been committed. So let's just check it out. What's there? So here we see our first uh, secret. So we got a flag of icky fun. Does anyone know what the icky fun reference is to? Pardon? Yes, White Stripes. So Jack White's from Detroit originally. Um, yes, bravo. Uh, <laughs> so we've got our first point. So remember, when we came into this CTF, we just had a username and password to gain access to GitLab. Now we've got um, some credentials. And if we went back to the readme, we would have seen that we know the endpoint that we need to reach to be able to get access to it. So is that okay for everyone in the back? I heard everyone shout yes all at once, so we're all good to go. Um, only because I couldn't remember this straight away. So I've just got a script here that's just configuring my AWS bucket with the credentials that were given, and we're connecting onto the endpoint. Now, I didn't check if this was running earlier on, so let's hope that it hasn't changed. So catching the AWS creds, and we can see that it's downloaded the uh, creds to a uh, foobar creds. So I could have done an LS here, sorry. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, it doesn't matter, we only live once. I could have done an LS and just see that there's a single config in this S3 bucket. Now, if we have a look at a config file that we just downloaded. So what's there? So this, to me, and I think for most people in this room, this looks like something I could use with kubectl. Yeah. So just looks like a cluster configuration. Can you just connect to it? Yeah, so I can pass through the uh, uh, cube config parameter, reference the config file, and then I can get pods. And I can see that I've got access to uh, the home pod. So just before I pass to you, I'm just going to make this a little bit easier for us to go forward. And I'm just going to pivot just in case we lose a shell afterwards. I'm just gonna move it in there, so kubectl get pods. Sweet, okay, I'm gonna pass to Natalia. All right, so let's just check it out, like what this like Homer pod is doing. So let's just inspect the YAML file. All right, so for me, it actually looks like it's like an Nginx service and then nothing suspicious. So we can see that the security context is actually not set. And then how can we modify this pod to be able to access to the host and basically fine tune this like car to drive around the whole Detroit. So what we can do is actually set the security context privilege to true and set the host speed and host network flag also to true. So how this configuration would actually look like is kind of like this. So if we modify the configuration and set this flag to true, this would eventually allow the pod to have access to the host speed and the host network namespaces on the host and then have CAPSIS admin and for example, CAPNET row as privileges. So you should be able to have the same privileges as you would be running root on the node. So let me just try to apply this. We are on GKE and it should be working by default. So let's see if I succeed. All right, looks like I did something. All right, and um, we can see that it, it was applied. So let me just like try to keep catalog exec into this privilege pod. All right, looks like I got a shell. And now let's just check cat etc password to make sure that I'm actually on the node. All right, so it looks like I got some information. And if I check at its shadow, that should contain the users also on the node. So let's just try to NS enter into all the namespaces.
So yeah, at this point, you're still within yeah. the container that's running within the pod, um, and we're using NS enter or namespace enter um, to look if we can go up, and the text is red, so that must mean success. Yeah, so <clears throat> let me look for like some kind of uh, flags around here. And now let's see if I find something. Oh, name. All right. So it looks like we got something. It looks like home car capital Ford flag is suspicious. <laughs> so let's try to see like what's in that uh, picture file. So I will just try to cat it. All right, it, for me, it looks like a base 64 string. So let me just try to decode it. And it points to like a Google Drive. So let me just try to open it and then see what we get. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you got the short straw of borrowing my machine today. <laughs> Do you want to have For sure. No. Oh, Wait, I will this. be fine. Let's try again. Hopefully it will work. And then you, in a couple of seconds you should be see, well, we got the second flag today. So these are basically Ford cars, and then Ford cars were, were produced in Detroit after the Second World War. So, okay, so let's just check out like what kind, what kind of other containers are running on the node. So I will use like Crycutter for this. And then it looks like we got a lot of Kubernetes and GKE related containers. And then what's interesting, we got Boombox and then BPIP. So I will just start with BPIP and I will check like what it's doing. So let me just inspect this container. Oh, let's try it again. Mm, yeah. Let me try it again. All right, so we got some information. So if we just try to look for some log files, that would be a good starting point. So we can go up to the bottom, and then we can see that it's actually writing uh, the log file that we will find in a moment. Okay, so it's, it's writing to var log pods. Intersection is actually the namespace where the pod is running, and then bbfi.log. So I can just like try to inspect like what this log file is looking like, and then what is the information that we are getting there. All right. So I can just like try to tail it. All right, so it's looking like some traffic lights, like green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red. So this is managing the traffic lights for the city of Detroit right now. <laughs> so um, we got some congestion. And at this point, if I'm, a, if I'm going after this company, I might want to disrupt their services, because if it disrupts their services, then it's a public image, it's a public issue. So how might we disrupt this? Let me just try to stop this pod and then see what we get. Oh, no. Okay, so I need the container ID again. 
which I will be getting from here. <coughs> Again. All right, so look like it looks like I stopped it. So let me just try to inspect the log file again and see like what we got here. All right, so it looks like we got another flag, which is actually like an EWS secret access key, and it says Dodge Viper. So what is Dodge Viper? <coughs> Dodge Viper, uh, according to Wikipedia, is the most successful car to come from Detroit. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't seen any Dodge Viper since I've been here. I, I wouldn't actually know. All right. So we got like an other container up and running. And then I will just pass it to Luis to see and figure out like what can be the flag over there. Thank you, Natalia. Um, so yeah, with that part of the attack, so we knew that we had something called Beep Beep um, with our open source intelligence after the press releases that we had from Puf uh, FUBA. Um, and the other one was uh, Boombox. So let's get st started with this. Okay, um, so if I do cry, uh, PS, and then I'm gonna grab that out to uh, Boom. So I've got the ID here. <clears throat> now, one of the, I, one of the things about the CTF, which we're hoping that people take away from, is, is that we've gone from being outside of this company just to having username and password. We managed to find that config and we got into the company. We got into a container, but we saw the RBAC was misconfigured, so we were able to run something that we w shouldn't r run. And we've gone from being in a container now to the root system, um, onto the VM as a root user. Because we're root and containers, containers just processes. With, well, that's a very TLDR. Um, <clears throat> But because they're processes and we're root, um, we can view what's going on in there. So if I go to cry cuddle or cry control, however you want us to call it, um, inspect, and I'm gonna inspect C4E, <clears throat> and I'm gonna grep for PID. So I've got the process ID. So with the namespace isolation that we have in place with containers, <clears throat> on the VM itself, um, it sees the process ID as 1664555. Inside the container, it sees process ID one. Now, this is built, uh, so let's get some more information with it as well. So if I go uh, into proc, and then if I go into the directory 166, I did four sixes. That's probably not a good omen when you're given a demo to do. Uh, three. Well, let's see. <coughs> the number of the demo gods. Um, so if I look here, I've got an, a bit of information about this process. So if I cut this out, um, if I cut out a uh, command line, <coughs> sorry for the cough. Um, I can see that it's running a uh, KO or Co app. app. Um, Co is uh, Co. You can use it with your containers. If you're building Go code, you can use Co to uh, build a container for you and put best practices in place. So already I know that it's not going to have Bash or Shell in there. I'm not going to be able to exec into that one. Um, <clears throat> if I cut out the environment variables, yeah. So if I cut out environ, then these are the environment variables I can be seeing uh, within the container itself. Just hide that from you and show it again. <coughs> so running in Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes injects some environment variables in. And one of the things that's been injected in is the Napster port. So, so what, is, what is Napster port? Oh, thank, thank you ever so much for asking. <laughs> um, so let's, let's go and try. find it. Here we yeah, go. Let's try to curl it. Like, what is it doing? Apparently, I was going to open a dictionary about <laughs> it. But, um, cool. Um, so I'm just going to get this all set up. So I come from a place called Cardiff in Wales. Um, we've been working on this idea for a while and this is ultimately where it got to. So I'm gonna run this command. So we're gonna do a watch, um, we're gonna kill hyphen s, and then I've got the, um, the IP and I can use this IP because it's, uh, this cluster is using IP tables and so it's available on the host. Hopefully with it all in. If you could just read out what you see, that'd be great. Um, just because you're probably just gonna need a little bit of time to review it. Let's just change the watch to two. I think it would be two by default. Ready? Okay, let's go. Ah, oh, God, that big setup, and I can't even spell watch. What a, oh. <laughs> That's a bad Sonic moment. Look, if you had one shot. 
or one opportunity. Just so you can read out of the back. Yo. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. So, if you're going to fly me into Detroit, I'm going to bring these lyrics to you. So, so if you remember, that's because Boombox, uh, Boombox is, uh, the lyrics, um, is providing you lyrics as a passenger so you can sing along to your favorite songs. Um, but let's just go a little bit further in here because we haven't found the flag yet. So if you go back to the environment variables, um, I'm using co. Uh, co, if there's any state within the container, it puts it into a place which we can also see within here, which is uh, var run co. So if I cd into root, so you can see by my directory now, and sorry for the noise on the screen, but we've got proc process id root. So if I uh, go to cd var run co, and I do an ls, I've got, I know because of the color, that's a directory, and so I'm going to do cat. So his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mum's spaghetti. And if I hit enter, then I see that the flag is lose yourself. So, nice one, <laughs> thank So remote work is great, but it does get lonely at times. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what have we done there? There's a picture of a car. So we've done a few things. Um, we've compromised our GitLab, and to do that, we had to pay someone $10,000. Um, but then we found credentials that were committed by accident. Um, they, those credentials could have been scrubbed, but because it gets a miracle tree, it wasn't scrubbed, and so we were able to go back and find it. Um, we connected to a cluster with those credentials, and then we checked the role-based access control. We created a new part with additional capabilities and utilities, became root on the VM, found flags on the VM, da 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 da, um, and we had a great time. So, from our talk as well, these are some of the resources that either help us out run these events or gives us inspirations for these events and what we've taken from it. And to that, um, here's our statement build of Twitter accounts. Um, so in here, these are the people that inspired us to be able to do this. Um, as well as that, uh, we, we've made this repo available. So the whole purpose of this was to create a brown bag exercise for people to take away from this conference. So that when you go back to your office, if you have to give a talk, like it's not much fun having to try and build something out of nothing. Um, it took us a while to get that done. Yeah. Um, so there's access to the Git repo. It's kind of in its stable-ish state at this moment. Um, there's going to be a little bit more love going in there. Uh, but there's resources in there as well, so that it's a basis of saying, well, this is how to attack it, but also this is how you can defend it as well. So we didn't want to talk too much about where we work, but there's things that we could put in place. So from isovalent, you could use Tetragon to be able to monitor things that were going on. Yeah, for sure. And then from ChainGuard. Yeah, so uh, we actually use a bit of chain guard in this. So we, we're using chain guard images just to remove um, a lot of bulk out of our containers so we can just like spin up shells and such in there. Um, and also behind the scenes, we're using Enforce on this. Um, so Enforce would have prevented us from putting the container that we used in Privileged into that box and it would have also told us everything that we had running in there. So to that, um, there's our QR code. So we would appreciate feedback and please be constructive with your feedback. It would be much appreciated. But to that, if you do have any questions, we'll be here for them. Otherwise, thank you for your day and hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Cool. Oh, we got the question there. Oh, I didn't think it was a question. Let's find out what's going to happen. Don't rock, paper, scissors for it. Thank you. That was really fun and entertaining uh, and super interesting. Uh, can you do a follow-up presentation next year where you defend from an attack? Um, yeah, so just to re can we do a follow-up and defend the attack? Um, well, actually, that's what we want to do with this repo in that we want to put defenses in place. And like I said from the start of it, this isn't a bit... So Natalia's been amazing to work with, and I think I might say that I've been all right at times. But in making it available to everyone, then it's a case of we'll put what we perceive to be like ways that we can defend this, but equally we're open to other people to say, 
actually, this would be a better way to defend and to save that as well, to attack, because there are so many different routes to attack. And um, I think um, it's the perspective of it. It's what you see. And that's what we try to explain with this talk, in that what the ability that you have is uh, you, who you are. You see different, different things differently to how I see them. And so if you can share how you might have done something different there, then I get to learn from that. And, where, and then that helps me defend. And again, the purpose of this talk is to help upskill everyone. Also, just like on another note, like we have a tool, it's called Tetragon is going to be, or it was as already. So you could see like all the events that happened already in the cluster. And then maybe I wanted to show it in this presentation, but maybe it would have been too much to see like all the observability events. But we could use that, for example, to actually prevent attacks. Any more questions? I think it, that's good. It's tough for you because if you've got to walk from there to there, that's going to be a tough day. Man. Good shot to 8 Mile. <laughs> Thank you. And your last slide, you had a SIFT SPDX commit. Yes. Do you have flavor for Cyclone DX of it? Yeah. So there's like, and this is by Easter eggs with CTF. So like, if you didn't notice through the talk, the title for each slide is a different uh, like uh, command that we could have used. So uh, like which Sonic and grabbing temporary FS and which and HTARP and uh, yeah, like uh, Chamard plus, and I don't know why I'm Chamarding a, a hex if I was a late night. But um, yeah, but again, this is what it's about. For us, I feel is, is that consuming this material. I, has anyone been on like a security course on their first day in the job? And then does it like go from being like, great, I'm starting a new job to, oh my God, I've got to get through the next three hours of these vid security videos. Um, it's that consumption of it. So back to Sonic. When I played Sonic as a kid, it was left to right. And then when you completed the game, you became supersonic, which meant you could go left, right, and up as well. And then you get to go to new areas. And that's, for me, what the CTFs are again. So it's a case of you go back, you upskill. It gives you that validation to say, I'm better, I, I, I've, I've improved. But then you can also see different routes and entries. I hope that kind of answers. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.